In this video, we talk about how we can go about escaping some of the mental ruts that we talked about in the last video. That is, when you have, when you find yourself caught up in, in availability heuristic or you're thinking, you're trying to understand whether or not you might be subject to this illusion of control or confirmation bias, how can you try to break out of these various kinds of, uh, of challenges that sometimes uh, we have to address? Um, there are several different strategies, and they generally involve interacting with someone else. That is, getting advice or interacting, trying your ideas out with others. Um, we, in our own mind, think about these things. We get in those, these ruts internally. We can do it collectively, too, as a group, fall into these routines. But you want to develop, in your interactions with others, with your teammates, the right sort of mindset that you are frank and challenge one another and that you bring different toolkit to the table, a different toolkit to the table, or tools to the table that allow you to break through some of these, uh, these challenges or these ruts. One, for example, is a combination. You, you might do a combination of things. The example that we were talking about before, uh, in an earlier video, when we talked about going to Starbucks with all these great ideas about apps and everything in your working memory, and then you walk in and you reach in your pocket or your purse and have to pull out a couple of dollars and you realize that you're living in the old world but you're thinking in the new world and all of this. Um, combining kind of how it would be done in a video game versus how it's actually done, sort of combining different models of action so that one challenges the other. Uh, obviously, you can't do it the way it would be done totally virtually, but at the same time, you don't want to necessarily be stuck doing it the way it was always done in the physical world. Is there a way to bring technology together? Combine different approaches, different mental models. Um, how does one play, uh, coming up with a new play in lacrosse, you might get an idea from soccer, or you might get an idea from baseball about how you might play um, some other, like basketball differently, or one or the other combining things together. Another way, and, and, and what you do in your groups is you, you as a group member, when someone proposes something, you add to it. You layer on top of it some other possibility and bounce them up against each other to see what happens. That's the combination model. You also have the notion of expansion, which says, okay, we have a very, relatively small idea um, you're going into Starbucks and you work with Starbucks to get this different way of paying or whatever. How might this be a broader solution? How might we expand this to more levels of interaction? That's this expansion notion. Essentially saying, how do we think bigger about this particular idea, this particular process? How might this apply not just in this one situation, but in a much broader situation? And the third thing to think about is by analogy. I want to understand how this type of thing works, um, how you might be, uh, be developing a, um, a new product or a new service that causes people to interact with one another. And you might be thinking about, for example, how, how, the, um, how a group of, uh, of dogs in a dog pack, for example, interact with one another and move together. And you think to yourself, that same sort of interaction, this uh, sort of emotional excitement and, and that sort of thing that you see from, uh, from you know, different types of animals, how does that, how do we observe that or see that in, in a human interaction? Um, and how does, how does that give us an idea about how to develop our product or service? Um, all sorts of analogies, from sports into real life, from business into sports, different kinds of analogies that you might use to not just, when you think about something, think about it differently, think about it bigger. What you're trying to do is fill up your working memory with other ideas, develop and use some of your experiences in history that's in your longer term memory, and also bring and make more explicit some of the things that are in your procedural or performance memory about how you do things. How do you succeed at a sport or at a performance art or something like that? How do you succeed at the routines you do in a restaurant? And how does that actually happen? And you may be able to apply that then into a different scenario. So these are some of the techniques. And generally, as I said, they apply when you're interacting with others. You can do them yourself, but it's, uh, it, it requires a good deal of discipline to be able to check your own thinking. And so sometimes it helps to have good friends, good advisors, people that can be frank, and people that can 
um, to balance some of the skills that you have with the skills of their own. That gets you to this sort of this last discussion about putting an entrepreneurial team together. One of the things that's challenging about it is when people study is, is it the smartest person in the room? Is it the most extroverted person in the room? Generally, people that are successful at entrepreneurs as entrepreneurs or in entrepreneurial teams have multiple skills. You have to have practical intelligence, which is be able to get things done, realizing that you have to take a small step forward. Um, Elon Musk is an example of that. He has big ideas, but at the same time, he's very practical about putting a car together that's designed in a new way that conserves energy and is very uh, and, and, is, and competes with gasoline automobiles when he develops his Tesla vehicle. Thinking about it that way with very practic the practical side of things. But you also need to be anal analytical and intelligent about thinking about issues and challenges and how you're making money and the like. That kind of intelligence as well. As long as some of these things we were talking about before, thinking out of the box, being creative and being different. Those come together and they're very rarely found in one person. That's why most of the time uh, entrepreneurial groups are teams. As uh, um, Bill Gates recently said, the CEO of Microsoft, or the founder of Microsoft recently said in a Charlie Rhodes interview, Microsoft succeeded because of a team of people, not because of any one person. It's, much sim it's way oversimplified to think of it that way. Those come together. But the challenges continue because it's not only having those sort of ways of thinking about the facts or about your own behaviors that are challenging. It's also being able to work with other people. The notion of emotional intelligence, social interaction intelligence, those kinds of things, also extremely important. Generally, these are found in teams. You could be a really good salesperson, but not necessarily a numbers person. Someone could be a numbers person that couldn't sell their way out of a paper bag. You bring those together and you might find the mixture that leads to an extremely powerful entrepreneurial team. Key to this though, particularly in the beginning, is to realize that whenever you, fit, you fit, fix yourself onto a program or a process, you may not be picking the right one. You want to continually challenge yourself because there is no mold and your mind is some no mold or no right way to do things and your mind may be fixating on one just because it wants to simplify it into a heuristic. The right way may be the next good idea and so challenging those things are important and that's one of the things that gets you from thinking about and seeing an idea to becoming and working through with a team or with your or thinking through it yourself but oftentimes with a team coming up with a practical solution that becomes a business a business model that you can take going forward in the next section we'll talk about how what keeps entrepreneurs up at night if you will as they pull all these pieces together what are they thinking about what are they really worried about and that's what we'll talk about next